Major developments today in the ongoing tensions with North Korea. The rogue regime launching several missiles. Some reports saying the North called it practice for hitting U.S. bases in Japan. The U.S. is now sending the first parts of a missile defense system to Japan and South Korea to protect those countries from the North. China and Russia are not happy about the move. All of this coming as we learn more about a secret operation against the North Koreans. That news broken by New York Times national security correspondent David Sanger, who joins me now. David, thanks for joining us. Be with you. Fascinating report. Uh, you've been working at it for months, I know, and, and uh, did a great job putting all of the pieces together. It's all about left of launch technology. What is that precisely? Well, if you think about the, the launch countdown, the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 blast off, it's everything you can do to mess up a missile at that moment rather than traditional missile defense, which has been trying to hit a bullet with a bullet once it's been launched. And what we've learned over the years after the United States has spent $300 billion since the Eisenhower era on trying to hit the bullet with a bullet is that that method doesn't work all that well, at least for intercontinental ballistic missiles. It does better for short-range missiles. And left of launch is all about doing things using cyber, using electronic warfare, to try to disable the missile before it ever takes off. And it appears the United States has been quite <clears throat> successful because there were a number of North Korean launches that did not go as planned. Well, we found about an 88% failure rate in the launch of their intermediate Musadon missile. But we don't know how much of that, John, you can attribute to the cyber and electronic warfare effort because, you know, the North Koreans are not the world's greatest manufacturers. So welding errors, bad parts, uh, just sheer incompetence can also uh, contribute to that. You know, in the early days of the U.S. missile program, we weren't so hot at it either, and even to this day, on occasion, we lose one. But the, uh, the North Koreans, you mentioned cyber warfare as one potential um, uh, chink in the armor, I guess. They're not connected to the Internet, by and large. How do you go after a state like that that, that has no connections or almost no connections to the outside world? <clears throat> well, they have very few connections to the outside world, but they're running a significant missile and nuclear program, and they need to be connected internally, uh, including to control their missiles. I mean, all missiles have some degree of electronic and computer controls. So the focus has been on that. Now, obviously, since we were working on a story of great sensitivity, we agreed with the U.S. government that we would not include in the story the techniques the U.S. is using. And we did that because we knew from statements the North Koreans had made that they were on to the fact that the U.S. was messing with them, but it's not clear that they knew exactly how. You also uh, broke the story about the Stuxnet virus, and this is... Um sort of an iteration of that kind of program, right? That's right, that's right. So Stuxnet was the attack uh, around 2010. It started earlier than that, in fact, on the Iranian nuclear program, and that was the attack that, that uh, slowed Iran's ability to produce uranium and, and enrich it underground. Uh, and that was, at the time, the most sophisticated cyber attack the U.S., together with Israel, had ever conducted. Uh, the attacks on North Korea are different in nature, but essentially the same concept. Slow a nuclear program without trying to strike it with kinetic weapons, other missiles, that might trigger a war. But the U.S. is sending that THAAD high-altitude missile system, missile defense <clears throat> system, to South Korea and Japan. That's the hitting a bullet with a bullet type of technique. That's Will right. it work? Well, that system has been pretty successful against short and medium range missiles. So it is a decent protection for the South Koreans and for the Japanese. It would do nothing for the intercontinental ballistic missile that we're worried about that could one day be tested or used against the United States. The other thing to remember, though, John, is that the North Koreans have an enormous array of conventional artillery just above the uh, border uh, between North and South about the distance between Baltimore and Washington, not very much. So even without missile technology, even without nuclear uh, technology, they have the ability to destroy a good deal of soul. Read more about it in the New York Times. David Sanger broke the story. Fascinating information, David. Thanks, Thanks for sharing. So much.